Hey guys, it's TTL back with another video for you and today I am going to be reviewing the Cooler Master MB540. But I'm having to put this bit in at the beginning to, as a kind of cutscene because the rest of the video has been made under the intentions that the case was £59.99, so less than £60 in the UK. And I right before it was about to go live everything was going to go on the website everything was going to go live here i've actually found out it's 109.99 so i'd encourage you to watch the video because then there's going to be another cutscene right at the very very end where i then pass my judgments on the true 110 pound price tag so it's a bit confusing it's all all over the place but hopefully you'll get what I mean when the video starts again in a sec. Hi hey everyone and welcome to my latest video which is a review of the Cooler Master Masterbox 540 or the MB540. Now it should come in under £60 if the uh, e-tailers aren't putting too much of a hike on the price. It's a case at the end of the day so let's hope they don't. But anyway, it's a compact little case with a tempered, side, uh, tempered glass side window, some funky looking front panel, plenty of radiator and fan options inside the case as well comes a bit unstuck when you actually start to properly test it as you should do in a review anyway so let's have a look to see where they may have slipped up So we'll start where we always do, and that is at the front and the top. So at the front, you have a couple of uh, USBs here. This does go into a USB 3 header on the inside, and then you also have a USB-C over here, which is a separate cable, as you'll know, for those of you with uh, newer motherboards. Power switch here, then you have a headphone microphone uh, combo, and then what you also get is a switch here, which can be the reset switch, but it also, if you look underneath as I do it, it can, as with this, it's wired into the uh, RGB controller. So uh, you, if you want it as a reset switch, you can do, but at the moment, or as it comes, it will come with it wired into the RGB controller, which also means if you don't have an RGB enabled motherboard, maybe you're running a slightly older system and are looking to update, that is going to keep you people happy. Now the mesh on the roof, is easily removable because it's magnetic. Now, as you can see in the roof, you have an off-centre 120 millimetre fan side, and you can go up to 360 mil in the roof, so three fans in the roof. Then there is a 140 millimetre mount as well, and you can go up to uh, 280 with that. So there is lots and lots of uh, fan options on the roof of the case. I said to you about the uh, RGB, and you saw me changing it, and it is actually like a two-way mirror uh, kind of aspect. So you've got the, R the lights on the inside, and I actually like it. The aesthetics is very pleasing. Um, I, I'm surprised how much I do like it, because that sort of thing normally doesn't kind of work for me. And we're obviously just cycling through the modes with the built-in little controller but if you wanted to put this on your motherboard it wires up to ARGB it will do all of the things that your motherboard software can do as well but the reason why we're here is I can just pull the front off and I did want to say that when you do pull the front off there are no cables because if you have a look here there's a couple of little uh, gold plated pins and they go up there so it's actually tallest you can literally just pull the front off and there's no cables being left behind now, this fan that's in the front doesn't come in the front of the case, obviously, because it's a Corsair fan, but you can get up to 320 mils or a pair of 240, uh, sorry, a pair of 140s in there as well. So you have a good number of options for you to mess around with fan-wise. None of this is removable. It's just thin steel, powder-coated, uh, but one of the things I do want to show you while we're here, because it will make more sense in a bit, is uh, the mesh area down the side of the front panel here. But I want to draw your attention to this section, because when it's fitted and we have a look from the inside in a minute, you can see there's a channel 
runs down the middle and then comes to this lower section because pretty much when the panel's on the front, this is pretty much flush with the front panel. So this ends up acting like a chimney and not a very good one, sadly. Uh, but I, like I said, just wanted to draw your attention to all of that so you're seeing it off before we get into the inside. Now, it is really easy to fit. You can just tap it. Now, the super shiny plastic. If any of you out there remember the old days of cases with side panel windows that were plastic, they ended up really scratched. Well, this is that sort of stuff. Even with a cotton cloth, you can rub this and put micro swells into the plastic. And for any of you that are detailers, when I say the word swells and paint, it makes a lot of us shudder and shiver, and we hate the idea of it, and that's exactly what it does in the plastic. Apart from it's a lot more difficult to get them out of plastic, and to the point where it's sometimes almost impossible, because it's not like paint where you can polish it back. You can make it better, but once they're there, they are there. So working around the case itself, spin it around. Like I said, large, full panel, tempered glass. It's also toolless. So you don't need to um, swipe it off or anything like that. It's literally got a little pop, couple of pop clips in the uh, top. And you just slide the door down onto the lower and then push it closed. There is a point for a screw that you can put up the top, but it's a really nice and simple way to put your tempered glass on. Round the back, only a 120 millimeter mount, no um, uh, options there for 140, obviously keeps the size down. Uh, normal seven expansion slot layout or PCI Express layout, however you want to call it. And you can see that you do get the vents down the side for those graphics cards that do spit air out the side of them. The uh, tools for the, or the screws I should say, for the side panel don't come out, they're retained. And then when you pop it off, it's nice and simple and it's just a normal door. Right, so back of the case itself. Three rubber grommets down the side of the ATX motherboard layout. I'll talk to you about uh, more sizes of motherboards when we get to the other side. Large cutout for uh, access to the back plates. Lovely, there's quite a lot of mounting or ratcheting points or um, securing points for your cables as you get around. Now you can see there is a bird's nest of cables down the bottom, but that's just because I haven't tried to make things all tidy and lovely. But down here, this is the little RGB controller. Now the ARGB output that comes uh, with it goes out to a three spur. So with that, we have the front panel connected on one, and then there is the rear fan connected onto another, and there's one spare. What you can do though, if you want, is use splitters to fan them out so you can connect more if you want, or you can actually get a uh, like a hub from Cooler Master so you can connect a load of them. But when you, uh, in fact, I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see this, because I said to you about the reset switch and you can actually see, it's even, says reset switch on it, but it just goes in there and you have the power that comes off from a SATA into this and you can manually change the uh, RGBs just by pressing this button if you want. So you don't have to use this. You can manually set it with this and keep your reset switch active. So that's a nice one for those of you that are like, well, I want my reset switch. So you can keep it if you want. Also in the back, you get a couple of 3.5 inch hard drive mounts, which you can obviously put SATAs in, sorry, SATAs in, uh, 2.5 inch solid state drives in if you'd like. And you can see there's a couple of points up here for uh, solid state drives as well. Uh, and it does come with uh, rubber grommets that you can uh, push in on these. So you can mount them a bit easier as well, rather than having to take your motherboard off and stuff like that. There's about 20 millimeters of room for cabling around the back, which isn't a mammoth amount. Uh, and if I'm completely honest, in th if you're not going to be using this hard drive mount in the bottom, I would remove it just so that you can add more cables into the bottom. But if you want, you can just use it to take the trays out and just stuff cables in there. 
Yes, it's not pretty, but I'm just trying to show you easy ways and maybe something uh, beginners out there may not have necessarily uh, thought about. Uh, but once you've built your case, you literally can just tip it on its side. And this is how I normally fit the door panels. Get it roughly in the right sort of place, push it down. There you go, nice and easy. Do your screws up. So it's not gonna come off. And there you go. All ready to get plonked onto your desk. Then, popping the glass side panel off, like I said, is very easy. They've made life incredibly easy for us in that regard. Now, I did say I was going to talk to you about uh, motherboard sizes, and we can zoom in where the light is here at the moment, and it's a really easy way to explain. So, XL80X has got a bit of extra width, but what you can see here is if we had an XL80X, it would come to about the edge of the grommets. So, that's an ATX case, uh, ATX motherboard fitted easily. For those ones with the extra width, like a Rampage Extreme, for example, it will still go in. You just need to think that it's going to be much closer to those rubber grommets. If it's one of the motherboards with extra PCI Express slots going downwards, then that won't fit because you can see at the bottom of the case that there is no extra room. One of my only criticisms uh, with the inside of the case in reality uh, is here. And I have left this here because I didn't wire the power switch up and I've been using this during my testing, but it was also as a marker for you so that you could see what I was on about. So if I was to have all of the front panel cables coming through, they've either got to come up here in the middle of the motherboard and then be pulled along to this, or they need to come from this grommet and in. And I think there should have been just a little uh, cut out here for us to put the uh, front panel headers in or even a little one at the side of the motherboard because pretty much all of the ATX motherboards have their front panel headers in this corner and I think it's a bit of an oversight for them to have not even remotely um, allowed for tidy cabling because we don't want to pull the cables all across. You're going to have enough issues when you've got your a USB two here and a USB three and then if you've got the um, extra USB you've got stuff coming over here. So I think it needed that extra bit and they've they've kind of missed a trick. Other than that, from this side, it's just a fairly normal layout. And the only other thing for me to really point out is you can have the power supply either way. That's with the fan up. You don't need to worry about it stealing air from your graphics card because most normal decent high-end power supplies hardly spin the fans at all so it's not a concern that you need to worry about but there is a nice little window here i would just say that if it was for me personally because this is just a normal standard length atx power supply i think this window needed to be another 10 millimeters longer so it doesn't cut off uh, the designs as it has done with this one but the main thing that i wanted to talk to you about in the front of this case and I'm going to need to move the lighting in the background, is basically to do with that front panel. Because remember I showed you that channel that was down the middle, it was a bit like a chimney. Well, you can see there with the top 120 millimeter fan, it doesn't actually get any airflow from the vents at all. So it's not getting any airflow from this. All of it is going into that center section which means it has to get the air from the very bottom of the case and you can see there the slight vintage that you can get from the uh, lower one but it's certainly not very big and if i was to pull it off so that you can see what i'm on about and i'll try and get it to stand up anyway There we go. So, you can see where I'm coming from. Now, it's obviously not the best design in the world. 
and I'm running, running around in the background because I'm getting fans for you to be able to show you where the fans sit. So that's where the top fan sits and you can see it's pretty much all in here. The second one, again, and these are going to be the main two fans for airflow throughout the system. The second one sits there. Now the bottom one is a little bit better because it's got a tiny little bit of overflow or overhang, I should say, but it's still pretty much concealed all in that area, which means at the end of the day, it's that small section of airflow for pretty much everything. Now, when you turn the fans up, you can actually get an audible difference where you can hear the air moving around in the small lower section of that front panel. So effectively, that front panel sits right up against the front of the case, acts like a chimney, and then you just have that small section at the bottom. Sadly, the temps have confirmed our fears, and I will talk to you about that now. Now, just a quick refresh on the way I do my testing, just so that I'm being very clear, because I have uh, had to explain this to Cooler Master as well. So, the uh, CPU cooler. Uh, the fan on it is powered from a SATA, but it has a nine volt reducer on it. So it runs at a continuous speed. Uh, the GPU, we set that to 60% fan speed, so it runs at a continuous speed. Because then the only differences are going to be how the case performs. Um, so, uh, and that really is the fairest way that we can do it. We run a specific test on the graphics card, which is just Unigen looped for 30 minutes and we save the maximum speed. Sorry, we save the maximum temperature. And then the CPU is run with Linpack without AVX for 30 minutes with OCCT. And we save the uh, maximum across all of the cores. And then what we do is we average it out. Now, the thing is with the uh, graphics card, if the graphics card hits 80 degrees, because it can't then ramp the fans up because they're manually fixed to 60%, it will then effectively just throttle itself and down clock a bit. So we actually call 80 degrees a fail. Now in our graphs, you'll see that the temperature is, it will say 60, but that's because it's effectively, what we do is we take the room temperature off of the maximum temperature and we display the um, delta temperature. I did have a complete mind blank then. So we take the ambient off of the maximum and that gives us the delta. But if the graphics card hits 80 degrees, it's effectively a fail. Now, it was not going to do very well in the way that it arrives. Now, I do need to stress, it only comes with one rear fan. You do need to put other fans in it. Most people will do, but because we have to keep it fair with the way that cases arrive, because some more expensive cases come with a full suite of fans, we do a test with it as it arrives. With this, mute point doesn't really matter, it does get hot. But then what we did is we added a single 120 in the uh, front and a single 120 added into the rear of the case. And then what we did is we treated all of the fans the same. Now the fans are different, but we run them with the RPMs the same. So we did a 600 RPM run, we did a 1000 RPM run, and we did then a maximum RPM run, which for this rear fan is 1750, 1800. Uh, what I will say is the 600 RPM runs didn't do particularly well, and it was just because it was really struggling to breathe at all. Um, graphics cards got too hot, failed, the CPU was rather warm. 1000 it did a bit better, and then when you move on to the maximum, it did even better still. But the most important thing that I do want to kind of drive home is the graphics card temperatures themselves. Because it, it was passing at 1000 RPM, just. And I do mean just. But then I tried one thing. I pulled the front panel off. Now, with a completely unrestrictive airflow, it was obviously going to make a massive difference, but it made 18 degrees worth of difference to pull the front panel off. So effectively, the front panel is just horrifically suffocating the airflow within the case. And it, the, the point that it makes its biggest impact on 
is the graphics card. So if you were looking at this as a good basic gaming case, it's not going to cook your system because effectively you're not going to be manually fixing your fan speeds. But if you have yours, your graphics card on a curve, it is going to run faster, which I mean it's louder, because it's going to have to work harder to get the air. And it's just that there's not enough airflow being allowed it into the front of the case. Now I personally think if they'd have uh, put the RGBs down the side of the case, and then had this section down the middle as mesh, we wouldn't be having this discussion and it would have been a, almost a brilliant case for £60. But sadly, the front panel massively lets the design or lets the case down and it really does come to the point where it's form over function. Uh, I do hope, because we can, I've shown you how simple it is to get that front panel off, I do hope there will be a different case that will come with a more simplistic design, which will have um, a lot of mesh. If they wanted to add RGB to it still, you could just have a single ring around the whole of the outside of the case. You could, it's one of the options, just to give it that lighting. But it does desperately, desperately need some uh, more airflow uh, in the front. And that's actually a shame because the fact that you can put 320 mil, 120 mil fans in the top, which could be a big radiator, you can put them in the front as well, which could be a big radiator, or just lots of airflow. For the price, it's actually a cracking case. And I do mean it is actually a very good case, but it's a very good case which is massively let down by a very poorly designed and thought out front panel. Sure, it looks amazing, but it just cooks and suffocates the inside of the case. And sadly, with an oversight that big, I can't particularly uh, s encourage you or say for you to go and buy it. I can't recommend it. Sure, if you're going to make peace with the fact that it's form over function and you just like the looks and you're not fussed about um, the temperatures and things running that bit um, noisier, then that's completely down to you and that's a choice you've got to make. But if you had to make me decide on your behalf, I'd go and look at something else. So that's where I'm going to leave it. It's a good case, great case, but massively let down by the front panel. Uh, and it's just form over function and I can't get behind that and I'm actually a bit saddened that they've even thought that this was ever going to do well. It kind of makes me question if they ever bothered to test it in the first place. But for now, at least, this is the tiniest one with its latest review. If you like this, subscribe, like, comment, all of that kind of malarkey. I will thank you for it later. But this is me out. Ding! Love you, sis. So, I tried to be nice at 59.99 because at that point I thought it was a reasonable budget case and you just needed to put fans in it. But for £110 with one fan and airflow that bad, there is no excuses. Absolutely no excuses. No, 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 no.